or has a grammatical function. Yani o diyelim ki bir dilde bir mesajı inceliyoruz. Yani bir cümleyi bir yapı inceliyoruz. O yapının içerisindeki elementer formlar ya bir anlamı ifade ediyor, yeni bir anlamı ifade ediyor ya da onun bir dil bilgisi fonksiyonu var, daha işlevi vardır. Bakın ya gram, either grammatical function or a unit of meaning. For example, renewed. Renewed is an element. Well, indeed it has three elements. Renewed. This form has three elements. The first one is re, and then the second one is new, and the other one is it. Alright. So minimal units of meaning new re. New is minimal uh, units of meaning, and re also a minimal unit of meaning. Why? Because it has meaning of again, and new has meaning of yeni. Right. Bunlar, bu, bunlar minimal elements'tir ve anlam, minimal unit of uh, meaning diyoruz. Niye? Çünkü Ren'in bir anlamı var, Nun'un da ifade ettiği bir anlam var. Peki sondaki Ed nedir? Ed'in bir anlamı yok. Ama onun bir fonksiyonu var, bir işlevi var. Nedir? İşlevi burada. İşte ya past tense e, işlevi var ya da passive veya farklı bir şekilde ne yapıyor? Past participle şeklinde geliyor. Tamam Tourist for example. Tourist how many elements does it have? Three. Tour, est, and se. So, tour, a minimal unit of meaning. Est, also minimal unit of meaning, but sit grammatical function. Okay? But you, as you saw in the example, renewed, when you said they are together, they are attached together, right? Or they can be separate. I will Love you forever. You see, they are separate. So some of them are attached together, they are combined, whereas some other elements are used separately, individually. If, okay, if it is, if it cannot be used separately, if if it cannot stand alone, or it, uh, uh, it cannot stand alone, it cannot be on its own, then it is called bound morphing. Bound, as you can uh, infer from the word bound, bound means bind, it comes from the word bind, to bind, binding, bağlamak. Alright? Bound means bağlanmış, time attached. So, bound morphemes are forms that cannot stand alone and they are attached to another form. Generally, we say suffixes, prefixes, which are affixes, are bound morphemes. E tabi, suffixler, yani önekler, sonekler, yani bunlara biz Ek dersek affix kanadları. <gülüyor> Affixler bunlar ne oluyor? Bound oluyor. Çünkü ya kelimenin önüne gelecek ya da arkasına gelecek. Okay? İngilizce'de infix'te yapılan infix'ler de aslında onları da uh, bound morfimlerden sayabiliriz ama böyle bir uh, İngiliz dil yap İngilizce dil yapısında böyle bir üretim sadece spoken English'te oluyor. Yani daha önceki örneklerde verdiğimiz gibi mesela Hala bloody luya Hallelujah You insert bloody In the middle of Hallelujah Or Fantastic Or Unaffin believable Remember? Absurdan hmm? 
absolutely, certain than lutely. Right. You are F and right, for example. And now we have free morphemes. Free morphemes, these are forms that can stand by themselves. They, that can stand alone, and they are not attached to another form. They are used as single individual forms. Like, uh, for example, I will long you separate. So, what are the basic forms? When we talk about basic forms, that also called stems. Stem? Cook. Nouns, adjectives, verbs like new, tor, noun, new, adjective, and go. These are, okay, basic forms and they are called free morphemes. Free morphemler ne oluyor o zaman? Tek başlarına olabilen, tek başına gelebilen. E, fiiller tek başına geliyor. Sıfatlar da tek başına geliyor. Değil mi? İsimler de tek başına geliyor. Bunlara ne diyoruz? Free, Free morphemes. Ben morphemler genellikle nedir? Affixler. Yani prefix veya suffix. E, free morphemler genellikle basic elementsler. Yani bu no. basic elementsler ben kastımız. Now, no. adjective and no. For example, undressed. Now, undressed is a form, but this form has three elements, right? Prefix un, dress, stem, and it, suffix. So here, un and it cannot be cannot be used on their own. They cannot stand alone. You cannot use un on its own. It has to be attached to another form. It has to be used with another form, and it is the same for it. However, dress, you can use it on its own. Dress, okay, well, dress as a word. Prefix, it is bound, dress stand free, it suffix, bound. Carelessness. Again, care is free, less bound, bound. But this is suffix, suffix. There is no prefix here. Okay. Vijdansızlık. In Turkish, vijdan, stem, it's free. Sis, suffix, bound. Li, suffix, bound. Dil birinda, dil, şart, dil is free, okay, stem, bring, no, it is not suffix, so the combined is it is combined through different words. So this is also a stem. Okay. Then we use compound sound. This is not suffix. Uh, it is free. Free. But that on it is own, it, it is not it has no meaning on it is own. So it is However, in English, you may found, find, come across with some forms that seems at the very first, when you see, when you see them first, you think they have prefixes like this one, receive, reduce, and repeat. However, when you omit rip, when you omit the prefix, see, deduce, and repeat has no meaning. Okay, they have no meaning. That means, and the, these are. Not prefix, but these are called sometimes bound steps. Okay?
lexical and functional morphemes. We talk about free morphemes. Free morphemes, they can stand on, on their own, right? And we said these are basic forms like nouns, adjectives, and verbs. But these are the free morphemes fall into two categories. They are divided into two categories. The first one is lexical morphemes, and these free morphemes are all also called open class words. Why open class? It is open. That means you can add new words, new uh, free morphemes to the language. You can add a new word, a new adjective, a new noun. Okay, that's possible. Yani new open class and new çünkü bunları üretebiliriz. Yani mesela daha daha önce ne dedik? Mesela selfie çekmek ee, neydi? Öz çekim. Bir kelime ekledik. İsim ekleyebiliyoruz. Veya işte Google for example. Google aslında fiil ekledik başka bir dile. Yani free morphemleri biz ne yapabiliyoruz? Ekleyebiliyoruz. That's why they are called open class. But of course, these are divided into two lexical morphemes. Lexical morpheme means it carries the content of the conveyed messages like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and, and adverbs. So when it, it has a meaning, when it, when it conveys a message, it means it is lexical. Yani eğer o kelimenin anlamı varsa, bir anlam ifade ediyorsa, biz buna lexical morphem diyoruz. Yani bu da free morphemdir değil mi? Yani bir anlam ifade ediyor. Yani it refers to an object or a, an abstract idea. Yani bunlar mesela bu girl dediğimiz